Welcome to Idle Red Hands, the podcast from Japan about gaming and gamer life. Welcome to Idle Red Hands. I'm Jeremy. I'm La. And today we're talking to Tomb Guardians Miniatures, Cass Sawinski, and he is currently running a new Kickstarter, and we want to talk a little bit about that. So, hello, Cass. Hello. Thanks for having me. Yes, it's good to talk to you again. Yeah, we talked to you in the spring during your uh, Vampire Faction, the Queen of the Damned Kickstarter that went very well. It looks like you got uh, you got funded and did pretty well with those miniatures. Yeah, we were very happy. It, uh, it funded and we hit some of the, the stretch goals and it went very well. Nice. And currently you're setting up for Origins in Columbus, Ohio? Yeah, the Origins started today here in Columbus and it goes through Sunday. So we'll have a busy week. And actually, Origins is the place where you kind of conceived of the entire idea for your kind of overarching Kickstarter plan. So starting with the uh, RPG, can you tell us a little bit about that? Origins is a convention here at Columbus, and uh, we're local to to the area. And over the years, I, I've gone to it for many years. And as my son's got older, uh, he's joined us. And I ran a role-playing dungeon crawl game there. And over the years, the game has grown to a larger and larger audience. And last year, my son came home and kind of bragged to my wife and told her how many people were there and how many people were following it and wanted to play it. And she actually had had the idea and said, well, honey, why don't you go ahead and publish your rules? And it's always been something that I wanted to do, but never had the time to do it. And last year, I, I decided, you know what, I, I want to do that. So I said, sat down and started writing the rules at the end of June. And uh, I learned a lot. And Mm -hmm. boy, writing a set of rules takes a lot of time. And it's not as easy as most people think, because it's it's a learning experience. And during that that time frame of writing the rules, my wife also asked, "Would well, you have miniatures of your own to use for your rules that uh, that you, you're creating and the world that you're creating?" I told her, "No, I just use what's ever on the market," and that's essentially how it started. And she said, well, "Why don't you create your own miniatures? You have your own line of miniatures and have your own game." It was a great idea. I reached out to some friends in the industry who got me in touch with Fortress Miniatures, Ben and. Jeff over there, and then they got a hold, got me a hold of some tremendous sculptors, Bobby Jackson and Jason Weeby, and I told them of my vision I had for our miniature line and a couple of really important ideas I wanted to have in our miniature line that essentially, is, I would say, has gone lost in the industry is I wanted a very high quality, high detailed miniature. Uh, that I could offer mm -hmm. a five-year guarantee with on the miniatures. And what I mean by that, if somebody purchases one of our miniatures from Tomb Guardians, if you break that miniature, all you have to do is mail it back to me because we offer a five-year guarantee. So if you break one of them, just mail it back and we replace it, no questions asked. Now, if somebody runs it over with a car, that's a different story. But overall, if you drop it off the table, it breaks, mail it back to me, I'll replace it for free. I mean, I, I am all about, or our company is all about making a customer happy. And, and if somebody breaks a 6 or $7 miniature and it's one of their favorite miniatures, just mail it back to me. And I'd rather replace that miniature and possibly earn that business of somebody's down the road and let them have a favorite miniature. So in that process, we launched several kickstarters the dwarves are were a lot were, were released the vampires which we just finished as you mm -hmm. you just said jeremy was uh, just finished here back in april and now we're into a different type of release with our company and that's our lost dwarven uh mine shaft uh that we're releasing here or that actually just went uh, live yesterday which actually we've already funded the campaign and hit our first stretch goal that's great i've been following i've been following your your project and i was expecting amazons and so this was a big surprise <laughs> last time we spoke it was supposed to be the amazons and it's a set of female amazons as a set of 10 female amazons plus monsters during the process of the amazons 
Uh, we had some issues with some of the sculpts, some of the points, uh, unforeseen problems. So they had to go back to the drawing table and fix some of the sculpts. And it just delayed the process. And because the dwarf mine dungeon tiles were ready, we decided just to flip the two and launch the the Dwarven Dungeon Tiles now, and then right before Gen Con in August, we're going to release the Amazon Kickstarter. Oh, that's great. So you want to talk a little bit about the material that you use for the tiles? Because it looks really great. And I was very surprised about the technology you're using to connect them. Yeah, absolutely. So our the reason we, we decided to release a, a dungeon tile set is in our rule system, in our game that we're releasing here later this fall, which we had spoke about last time we were on the show. Mm-hmm. It's a role-playing game. And we decided to offer adventure modules or a campaign in which a group of people can select from a party of five, of five characters and play a campaign uh, through the dungeons. So being that we ought, we're offering the adventure modules and campaigns, the dungeon tiles was one of those things that just fit really well and was something that I wanted to do. There's a number of dungeon tiles on the market, and I really didn't don't like those tiles that are on the market because most of them are held together with clips. The clips break. You push them, push the tiles together. They don't clip all the way together or the tile will break. And I didn't like that system. (laughs) So what I did is I reached out to a fabulous sculptor in Lovecraft spoke with him, said, hey, I have an idea. I would like to release a set of dungeon tiles that are magnetically held together. So the polarity of the magnets will pull the tiles together so people don't have to use clips and and have have it pull pull apart or you break them. I just want the polarity to, to mend them together so they're nice, tight fits. So we started the project in January, actually beginning of January, and we started crafting the tiles. And we came up with 47 dungeon tiles for this particular re- release, plus 30, 40 different accessory pieces, of which a lot of them are, are stretch goals, and then four special rooms that are offered in, in this release, which are the crystal room, the blacksmith room, the forge, and the uh, storage room. Uh, th- three of those four rooms, the crystal room, the blacksmith, and the forge, all uh, have LED lights, which certain parts of those rooms light up. Right. And those are really cool. Yeah. Yeah. I saw those on the Kickstarter page. You had videos. And I said, why does he have videos for static terrain pieces? And then I saw the the flickering lights of the forge and the glowing of the crystals. Like, that's excellent. Yeah. That was really that's a nice effect. Those are really cool. And what's nice about those particular LED lights is that the person who has the room, there's 16 different settings for those lights. So if you don't like the flickering look, mm-hmm. you can have it rotate the different crystals, like the crystal room. The different crystals can light up at a different time, or you can have it pulsate. Or if you don't even like flickering, you just have them lit up 100% of the time. There's 16 different settings that you can choose from. And then you can also choose how fast you want it to flicker or how slow you want it to flicker so it's it's really really a, a cool idea and our manufacturer that we're using had some great ideas yeah it's, it's a nice effect and very very interesting i haven't seen that those sorts of effects and or use so subtly just to light the forge or you know to light the small details i thought that was really great oh well, thank you how are the rules coming uh, for the setting itself, will they be released with the dungeon tiles, or is it still coming later? Yeah, the dungeon, the the rules themselves are still being they're still being in the process. Since the last time we had spoken, we have hired several other people for the project. We hired a dedicated writer that is writing for us uh, the background story of the world and the background stories of the factions and the background stories of some of the characters within the factions. Mm. He's uh, located in Germany. We hired a graphic artist uh, out of Belgium uh, who's doing the graphic arts part. But as of right now, the rules are are in the graphic arts, which essentially the rules are pretty much completed. Mm. It's the graphic arts part and the backstories that we're still finalizing. But knock on wood, as I say this, because like the last time I told you, the Amazon are going to be released at the end of May. <laughs> uh, as we say that, as of right now, we're still on track to be able to release uh, late fall. Oh, nice. 
Oh, that's great. This is shaping up to be an amazing game. I mean, just the quality of the miniatures that you've released so far and now seeing these tiles, it's really exciting. Like once all of that is together, that's going to be a, a really impressive set. As an owner, I mean, I take this, this is not a job to me. This is, yes, it's a hobby, but it's my passion and I love doing it. And my wife would attest to this. I mean, I can wake up at nine o'clock in the morning and work on this all day long until one o'clock in the morning and not realize it's one o'clock in the morning because it's just, it's something I love to do and it's not a, a job. And I don't know if uh, people out there understand that, but it's, it's, it's just fun for me to do. And I love being the creative side of doing doing this especially this, these dungeon tiles which was a little bit different than the miniatures the miniatures are just one aspect but now we get to i get to cre- i created a whole dungeon set and each individual piece is different there are no two same pieces there's all there's something different on every single piece which is also a little different because i mean you can even though they're they're printed tiles the other companies out there have printed tiles and they're all the same and they have flat surfaces and flat walls. And I didn't want that. I wanted to have on our dungeon tiles. I wanted to make sure that the tiles had depth to them and they, they had extreme amounts of detail, which Ian definitely accomplished. Yeah, that's great. It, it looks really nice. I mean, the, the photos that you provided and, and the video also things look really great and it looks good painted too. I like that. So you're going to have professional painters. Oh, I appreciate that because I painted those. Oh, nice. Well, there we go. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I did see. It, it was a learning process for me, but yeah, I painted all, I painted the, the, all the pieces that you see on our Kickstarter. I end up painting uh, when we get into the levels of the, the painting. I am actually one of the painters that will be painting. Yeah. I saw that credit on the site. Yeah. I saw Kasowinski painter, <laughs> <laughs> owner, founder, painter. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Do you have samples of everything that you're going to be demoing at at Origins? Yeah, we have. I brought down the the dungeon. Uh, not every piece is there mm-hmm. uh, because if I had every piece there for the dungeon, it would be huge, and I, I, there's just not that amount that amount of space. But we have the uh, dungeon there at Origins uh, with the rooms uh, lit up. The diorama is there. So yeah, we're, we're presenting it at Origins. And I noticed there weren't any miniatures uh, included in this Kickstarter campaign. Are Is everything that you've released on Kickstarter so far uh, available on your store at the Tomb Guardians website? Actually, since you said that, um, on Friday this past week, uh, I got notified by our manufacturer that the Valroth Vampires, which Kickstarter completed and what the projected fulfillment uh, on that was supposed to be mid to end of October of this year is actually ahead of schedule. And it mm-hmm. looks like we'll be able to deliver end of August, beginning of September. So that was kind of exciting to hear that. Excellent. Uh, because in the process of making miniatures, there's a number of different steps that you have to do. It was nice to hear that it's ahead of schedule. So, But you can order everything that is on our website and all the Kickstarters, including the, the vampire Kickstarters with the undead and all the monsters, are now available. Those sets are available for pre-orders. Oh, excellent. I guess the, the lowest level tier, or not, or one of the lower level tiers, you get the Dwarf Paladin. And that's included. Oh, good. What, what's good is with people are interested in those those special rooms, you can add those on. Even if you get like a low level, they can be available as add-ons. So that's nice. I would say setting up the Kickstarter. Obviously, it's a it's a dwarven mine, and I would love to offer all our miniatures on the Kickstarter. But what essentially will happen when the Kickstarter ends, when we send out the surveys, because we use backer kit. Mm-hmm. All our miniatures will be available, so so people, if they want to buy the dwarfs or they want to buy certain miniatures, will be able to have the ability to purchase any of our products at the end of the the uh, Kickstarter through the the back end through Backer Kit. Oh, that's great! Yeah, that that's a that's a really good really good idea. I think a lot of companies that I've seen that do that they even include previous Kickstarters as add ons through the Backer Kit. I think that's a great. You're a great way to sell. I had a lot of requests because people knew that they were coming and they wanted me to, as an add-on on the Kickstarter, put the dwarves in or put some monsters in that people could purchase on just for add-ons. And I didn't want to do that initially in the Kickstarter because I felt that it took away from the Kickstarter itself. Oh, yeah. And I told them that, hey, when we send out the survey, you'll be able to purchase all that stuff. And if you really want to purchase it, all you have to do is go through it. 
through our website and get it through our website. No, I, I think that's good to focus on the tiles themselves because they're they're really amazing and it's really a, a good thing to uh, not distract people. I appreciate that. I mean, I, I totally, I mean, th- this has been a, a, one of my baby projects and I really put a lot of time and Ian put a lot of time creating these tiles and then the, the four special rooms and we have a couple cool things in the Kickstarter that's coming up that uh, we're going to release for the audience to, to help out, essentially. We're actually finishing uh, the conceptual art of a fifth room that we'll probably release. Uh, it'll either be a stretch goal or another add-on, but it's going to be a tannery room. Ooh. So that will be a, a fifth room. But we're going to ask the audience that of the people that have pledged of the Kickstarter that use your imagination and give us some ideas of a room that you want, would like to have as long as it matches the theme that we have currently. Mm -hmm. And the person that we choose uh, for that particular room for this, uh, this campaign will get that room for free. Oh, nice. Oh, that's a, that's great. We're trying to get the audience involved Mm -hmm. and, and let them, have their say and what they want. Mm. I mean, I know what I want, but it's not just about what I want. It's about what our audience wants and some ideas of what they what they would like to have. Yeah, no, it, it's actually about the theme you're talking about. That what struck me when I was looking at the tiles is they it actually looks like a dwarven mine with the tracks. There's like those pulleys, those tiles, and that. So yeah, I was really really impressed by that. Being a dwarven mine chap, there's certain things that I imagined that would be in there, and because this is a lost dwarven mine shaft and there's a story in our adventure and how that happens but i wanted to have if you look at our dungeon tiles there's essentially two different there's actually three different types of dungeon tiles in here and we can go over there but two main ones and you have the the earth element tile which essentially is just your rocks and your earth base and then you have like you had said, Lyle, the the earth with the tracks, which is a separate set of tiles. So mm. you don't if the customer that's wants to purchase the dungeon tiles, if they didn't want the tracks, they don't have to have it. They can just have the earth element or vice versa. If they wanted to have the tracks and not, or if you wanted to have both, uh, you can have that way. But there's also a third a third set of tiles, which is hard to see because I intermixed them in, in here. Mm-hmm. And you'll be able to see, like, if you're looking at the at the pictures, you'll see some of the tiles have some bricks in them on the tiles, like in in the uh, the main picture uh, where it's uh, about us, right by the door. You'll see some bricks on the door, and then the tile next to it has some bricks too. Those are actually transitional pieces for our next dungeon uh, set that we're going to re- release, and I purposely did that to have some leeway into the next theme dungeon because this is just the first level of a multi-level dungeon that adds on to this. Oh, that's great. That's that's nice to, to kind of suggest yeah, where things are going and, and let people uh, you know, wonder what's coming next. And then to also have a transitional tile between those multiple sets. That's really that's really clever. So what, what's the actual material that, uh, that the tiles are made out of? Are they resin or kind of a plastic? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. I mean, all the tiles they're gonna, are, are 3D printed. We use a uh, layer ad, uh, additive manufacturing process, which basically means it's a higher resolution printing from a from the normal 3D printers that are on the market. Mm-hmm. So this is actually a higher print resolution, which removes a lot of the striation right. lines as you print. You can't get rid of them because it's a 3D printer. Mm-hmm. But what you can do is you can get a much higher quality print, which reduces that. All our tiles are print printed with a PLA material, mm-hmm. so you don't have to give it a, uh, a soap bath when you receive it all you have to do essentially is prime it if you wanted to and now what i suggest and how i did it is use a thin layer of polyurethane Mm -hmm. which helps remove the striation lines and then prime it over the top and that's that's how i did all the tiles on on this kickstarter yeah that's a good idea because it'll fill in yeah any of those tiny lines will be filled in with the uh, the polyurethane yeah that's great exactly and now if it doesn't fill in all you gotta do is add a little bit more uh or you don't have to add any at all. I mean, 
but I, I chose to do it, do it with a little bit. So have people been asking you for access or pledge level of the actual files that were used to print the tiles themselves or people saying, I want to do it myself and not worried about you know the resolution? Because that seems to be a thing that's happening a lot of hobbyists. Yeah, all the time. I, I've got a lot of requests in that and, and that's one of the black lashes that we've got is that, well, I've got my own 3D printer and I want to print it. So my saying to that is I understand that and I have my own printers and I purchased our competitors' tiles and I printed all their tiles and I have hundreds and hundreds of their tiles. However, I, as an owner, there's a number of reasons why I chose not to release the STL files. The main reason is is I wanted to, to maintain the same high quality print for a person that has a printer and all the the people that don't have a printer because there's more of those customers that don't have a printer right. than have a printer and i didn't think it would be fair for the people that didn't have a printer not to have the right to to be able to purchase these tiles the other reason is and i'm not accusing anybody of this is once you release an stl file it's out in space and pretty much anybody can get it mm -hmm. for free right to produce a set, and, and we're talking about a highly, highly detailed set of tiles, and then not just highly detailed set, it's also something very unique to the market because these are magnetically held together. Mm -hmm. I felt since it was my innovation, I didn't want people stealing it. And I'm not saying people will do it, but there are those bad apples out there that will happen. Right. And I didn't want that to happen. So I decided as a company that we were going to just release them uh, as a physical product and mm -hmm. there there's a niche in the market that i think we as a company has fulfilled i mean dwarven forge produces magnificent quality products now mm -hmm. they're very very expensive and very very heavy to do that and then you have the 3d printed products that you can buy the stl files for and then we fall right in between i mean our tiles are less than half of what you can get a Dwarven Forge tile for. Right. Now, they're, like I said, their tiles are great, and I mean, they're very, very nice. But for our niche, for our company, is that we fall right in between that six, right around that $6, and that's U.S. dollar mark for a tile that is much more highly detailed than what's out there. Hmm. And we also we also include in the, in the tiles the magnets. So you don't have to go out and buy your own magnets. We provide the magnets for you. No, I, I think that's great. And I think if people understand that they're supporting an entire system. So, you know, the, purchasing the tiles and purchasing the miniatures is, is funding this entire game. And if they want to see, you know, all of the factions released and everything done, I, you know, I think not do it yourself, you know, do it yourself is not is not an option. I think, you you know, supporting the entire project, the entire RPG is a is a really you know great thing to do. You know, I, it's not that I don't I don't want to make people mad because that's the last thing I want to do. But I also want to protect the integrity of our products and make it easier for the vast majority of the populace who don't have 3D printers or who doesn't want to go out and spend a thousand dollars because you can't uh, these tiles you cannot print on a two hundred dollar printer. I mean, there you may try, <laughs> but you're not going to get the quality because of the detail that are on these tiles. I mean, you can see by the videos and you can see by. Yes. Just the still pictures, the the the, imme the immense details of these these tiles. Yeah, yeah, no, that's true. Yeah, speaking of quality, I mean, the gaming tabletop has really transformed recently, and people are demanding like higher quality props or or scenery. Like not not it used to be more of a war games thing, but why is why do you think that's happening with the role playing crew? You know, it's it's one of those things for technology. I mean. A lot of the role player people, me as one of them, play online games, and the evolution of online games has come from a point of very low quality to human like aspirations on a computer that you can see when you play a game. And I think that just carries over to what they want on a game table. And that, I'm one of them. I mean, I want to, when I play a role-playing game, I want it to be as realistic as possible. I mean, if I could produce a dungeon tile that had hologenic figures on there, <laughs> I would do that. Now, I don't know how to do that, so obviously I'm not. But, I mean, if I could, that would be that would be awesome. But I think that's that's kind of where 
I come from is I want to have the most realistic playability. So when I sit down and I, I go through a dungeon, I don't want gaps in my, my dungeon. I don't want a flat surface that every particular dungeon tile looks the same. Yes, it'll work. I and mean, I'm not saying it's a, it's a bad thing. I mean, people like that. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. But for my, me as a, as, as a person, as myself, I wanted to have something more realistic. So when you sit down and you're going through, as an example of this dwarven mine, mm-hmm. you can put yourself into the role of a, of a dwarf going through the mine and feeling what, what, what it's like going through the mine shaft. And that's why, like on this one, I, if you see the, the tracks, I even painted the tracks where there's all the, the metal in the dungeon is rusted over. I try to have the rust over effect that oh, yeah. the, over time these pieces rusted. Yeah, and I think that the tiles are incredibly immersive. So the combination of the miniatures and the tiles makes a really immersive experience. So I, I think you're totally right. That That is what players are tr- starting to demand. And I, I think that works really well. So I saw that there was a, a pledge level for creating. So you said that there were people that kind of submitted ideas, but there's a, a one of the higher pledge levels is for actually uh, creating new tiles. Yes. And uh, there was, it's a creator pledge level. So tell us a little bit about that. That's actually, a, that one I'm going to give credit to my wife, actually. She came up with that mm-hmm. one. And uh, like we spoke last time, uh, Jeremy, my wife, if most people don't know my wife, she's in the background, but she she's not a gamer. She, she'll play board games with the family and she'll play Monopoly and Life and all those fun games with the kids. But for role playing, she really doesn't. That's not her cup of tea. So, but what she what she what she came up with was was a really a good idea, and I loved it. And when she brought it up, and she said, "You know, there's a lot of people like yourself that don't have the opportunity to create things, and why don't you have a pledge level that you can offer a number of people the opportunity to help create the next dungeon level with you? You can set the theme, but have them come up." and directly help you create the next dungeon level. And I thought it was an awesome idea. That's how it came up. So we called it the Dungeon Creator Set. And essentially what the set is, is the person or persons, he or she, that uh, pledges this level will be able to help us create the next dungeon uh, level because we are adding the next dungeon will add on to this one. And so it's essentially a, a level lower than this one and the theme of that particular dungeon i already know it's 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 called uh, the lost dwarven catacombs so i want to have a have a like an eerie feel eerie haunted feel to it but how that evolves essentially it will be up to the people that pledge this level and myself and we'll 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 sit down with ian we won't sit down we'll talk to him over the phone but we'll talk with him over the phone and who's also the engineer and let him know what we want and we'll create that whole next level of the dungeon. So besides doing that, they will also get a fully painted ultimate uh, ultimate dungeon set, fully painted of this particular Kickstarter. So that's roughly 173 pieces plus the four special rooms and all the stretch goals. Mm-hmm. And then they'll also receive a set of the next dungeon that they're actually helping create. They'll get a full set of dungeon tiles for the next dungeon also. Nice. Oh, that's great. That's a really great idea. And getting getting the fans and getting people involved in the creative process. That's a that's yeah, I really admire that. That's great. Well I like the idea because I mean I have my ideas, but I mean my ideas only go so far. And mm-hmm. If I have a, colla- a collaboration of multiple people on a project, they have their ideas, and I may or may not like them, but they help with the pro the- with the project. So it's not just my ideas; it's everybody's ideas, and they'll get to to put their name on, on the project. Right? Yeah. No. It's uh. It sounds like the the catacombs are going to go well with the uh, Queen of the Dam miniatures that you have. But it's it's probably a good thing that your wife isn't a role player because she seems to come at the come at the, your projects from a different angle and giving you different ideas. So that's pretty helpful. But I have the the dining room table question. 
Yeah, absolutely. And w- which tier would fill up a dining room table? Because you, you've got several. You've got like the uh, like the the lower the lower dungeon, the mid dungeon, the ultimate dungeon. Wow, well, it depends on how big your 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 table is. <laughs> the ultimate dungeon is a big dungeon set. I have well, I've, in my in my dining room, I have a real big table, and that's I think I want to say that's a ten foot table, and that one with the ultimate dungeon will fill that table up. Wow. I mean, if you put enough angles and now you have to manipulate it, but it will fill, it will fill it up. Uh, it's a, it's a big dungeon set. I mean, you pretty much get every tile we have. Now we have 47 tiles. Now, if you count all the different ones, there's not 47 in that set because we held some of them back for stretch goals, but you can manipulate it where it could fill up that, that space. I mean, it's, it's a big dungeon set because you also get the, the four big rooms too. Those rooms are generally like the forge rooms, a nine by nine, nine inch by nine inch room. Uh, and then let's see the, I'm trying to think storage room and the blacksmith room are seven by seven and the crystal rooms are six by six. So they're, they're decent sized rooms. and and you're right with my wife. She has a different vantage point, not being a role play, not being a role player, or not being in the industry. Just like I give her credits for Valorous Empires. She and when we were writing the rules, she was like, "Well, you know, you should have some female factions just that are female or run by females." And that's essentially how Valorous Vampires came came about. And we decided to have instead of a male vampire leader we decided to do a female queen that's how the the uh the female amazons that that's an entire set of just females mm-hmm. uh came about because of of her ideas nice yeah i think yeah she's contributed really well and she was actually the impetus for the, the whole project she said make your own miniatures and yeah that's great yeah yeah she's the one that kicked me in the butt to start it <laughs> That's great. <laughs> wow. Well, this looks really good. I mean, the, the Kickstarter, I was I was really surprised to see it. And I was surprised to see the amount of tiles that you've produced and that this is just going to be the first part of you know a continuing set. You're going to move from mines to catacombs and that's going to be uh, really fun to see. Yeah. I hope people will take a look at that. Yeah. We, we're excited about these dungeon tiles and, and hopefully the, the audience out there is excited about it. And some other questions that have come up uh, that uh, I just want to state here is how do they fit with how the dungeon tiles fit with other people's miniatures and other companies' miniatures? We uh, we use the same sculptors that Reaper uses and also WizKids use, and mm-hmm. our miniatures are the exact same size, meaning height-wise, as those companies, and we purposely did that so. If you use our miniatures or if you use their miniatures, when you're using a dwarf, a dwarf's a dwarf and it's the same size and it doesn't look odd when you're playing with it. Now, our miniatures may look different because they're two different companies, but they're the same size and they all fit within the dungeon. Uh, You don't have to worry about that. Also, our dungeon tiles are a little bit larger than what's on the market. Our dungeon tiles are two and a half inches wide, not two inches wide, Mm -hmm. because that's pretty much the standard on the market is two inches wide. Ours are two and a half inches wide, and the reason I did that, and there's a there's a, a good reason why I did that, is when you play dungeon crawls, on if your tile's two inches wide, essentially you have a wall on one side, which takes up a half an inch. Right. So your actual play surface is only an inch and a half. So when you put two tiles together, your play surface is only three inches. Our dungeon tiles are two and a half inches wide, with a half inch wall on each side so our play surface is actually one inch larger so they're four inches in between right now we do have some tiles that are five inches in between but majority of the tiles 90 percent of the tiles are four inches wide so it gives you a larger playing surface so you can put some of the larger monsters in the hallways or in places that normally you couldn't put like a mountain ogre or a troll in because it just wouldn't fit. That's great. That's really good thinking too, as far as not taking up the space of the tile with the thickness of, of the walls. That's yeah, very, very clever. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time. I know your schedule has got to be crazy for the launch of the Kickstarter and then doing conventions at the same time. 
Oh, and we forgot to say, I just had 13 days ago, I had a new baby too. Uh, we had our, our baby girl was born th- 13 days ago. So there's a there's a little lack of sleep in our household <laughs> right now. Well, congratulations. And yeah, I'm sure that's every, everybody is uh, pretty stressed out at this point. And I appreciate you guys having me on. And, and uh, if anybody, if your audience needs to reach out or has any questions, they can email email us. Uh, they can join us uh, on our Facebook uh, on our Facebook uh, follow site, which is uh, Tomb Guardians Miniatures. Shoot us an email there, or a, our phone number is actually on our Facebook. So if you call the office nine times out of ten, I'm the one answering the phone. So I, I usually pick up the phone and answer. Oh, that's great. Yeah, you have to let us know how baby proof the uh, tiles are. People, are, parents are going to want to know. <laughs> yeah, it's funny you said that. I have a three and a half year old. I, they have the, the little baby. She can't. She can't do anything. But I have a three and a half year old, and this was another idea of my wife. She's like, you know, honey, you should have Scarlett play with your tiles because I have so many prototypes in the mm-hmm. house with magnets in them. She has taken all of those and put them in her Barbie house, <laughs> and she plays with them all day long. She had no. She hasn't broken any of them. Mm-hmm. So. That answers your question for baby proof, but they're all over our house. She wanted me to do a video showing her putting the tiles together, so they're so easy. <laughs> well, that's good. A very good stress tester. You've got a uh, you got free stress testing built into your uh, company. <laughs> yeah, three and a half year old. <laughs> <laughs> we encourage anybody listening to uh, to check out the Dwarf Mind Quest uh, Kickstarter by Tomb Guardian Miniatures, and uh, and also so that you know um, the, their miniatures from previous Kickstarters are available on their site, and also they will be available in the Pledge Manager, the backer kit, once once this campaign has concluded. So yeah, great talking to you, and I, I hope uh, that uh, Origins goes very well. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate you guys having me on. Also, I look forward to our next conversation, which will probably be here in a month or so. A little over a month. We'll talk about the Amazons. Nice. Yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to see the Amazons and uh, good luck with the project. Uh, it already You've already funded, so no worries there. So I hope things go uh, go really well for the, the rest of the campaign. I appreciate that, that, guys. Have a great night. Thanks a lot. Drive through RPG. We average nine new titles a day. That's over 60 a week. And we've got well over 15,000 RPG titles online right now. Drive through RPG. The one true source for RPGs.
Idle Red Hands, recorded in Kobe, Japan. See us online at www.idleredhands.com. Music provided by Tripod Jimmy, and the song was Roadkill. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next time. <laughs>